Hello, this is Mark Lindy. Welcome to Meet the Candidates. First candidate I have for you to see is Robert Sullivan, City Councilor at Large, running for mayor. Hey, Mark. Bob, nice to see you. Good, good to see you. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. We're right at the the eve of the election, next week, the 17th. That's right. And uh, the final stretches of the campaign, the final weekend. How do you feel going into the into the uh, preliminary election? Well, so first of all, you know, it's been a, it's been a long campaign. Uh, but it's been a positive campaign. That's the way I've always done it for 14 years as a city councilor at large. Have great supporters, great volunteers, knocking doors, calling people. Uh, I feel really good about the campaign that my, uh, my, you know, myself and, and my supporters have run. And you said it's the home stretch. So, you know, we campaign until 8 o'clock when the polls clo close on Tuesday, September 17th. But, um, you know, no regrets. I'm doing it the right way, positive and getting the message out and knocking on doors. Well, that's the way to do it. It's retail politics. It's one-on-one. -on -one. People get to meet their candidates in person. That's right. Um, came off of a good debate over at uh, Brockton High yes. with the uh, NAACP. Um, and, uh, you know, in the, in the middle of that, there's a presidential campaign yeah. debate. Yeah. Ten, ten people running for president. That election's next year. I'm more interested in this one. So, um, People know you, but I'm not going to take that for granted in this interview. I know you. I've lived here my whole life, and you've been my counselor at large for 14 years. That's right. Why do you want to go to the next level? Well, I think it's vitally important, Mark. And uh, first of all, thank you for your involvement on the NAACP debate the other night. It was a really good venue, and it was a good, good a forum. Um, you know, I'm from Brockton. I uh, went to Brockton High School. My wife's from Brockton. We actually met at Brockton High School. We were, we were prom dates many, many years ago. And we're raising our three kids here in the city of Brockton. Two of my children go to Brockton Public Schools. My oldest goes to Trinity Catholic Academy. Um, I volunteer time. I volunteer coaching basketball, baseball, and soccer here in Brockton. I, you know, I'm not the best coach, but I like to give back to the kids. Um, but I ran 14 years ago as a counselor at large serving the whole city, and I was elected, and I've been reelected every two years, and I've topped the ticket the last 10. Um, and that means that people believe that I'm being productive and being an advocate. And that's what it, that's what it means to serve. Um, I want to take the next level because, un unfortunately, with the untimely passing of Mayor Carpenter, um, we have a void right now, and, and we need to either go up or go down, and we can't afford to go down. Brockton is here, but it needs to be here. We need to have a better community, a safer community, a cleaner community, uh, an economic thriving community. Education is paramount, Mark. You're a product of the public schools. When there's kids in a classroom with 35, 36, 38 kids, not good for the children trying to learn, definitely not good for the teachers. So, you know, my experience matters. My, my slogan is leadership for Brockton's future. And I think that means something. You know, I've served 14 years. I've done 14 budgets. I've worked under four different mayors, Mayor Jim Harrington, Mayor Linda Belzotti, Mayor Bill Carpenter, and now Mayor Moses Rodriguez. Um, you know, it's just so exciting to, to be an advocate in Brockton. And I believe when you look at the mayor, Mark, and you know this, it's the CEO of a business known as Brockton. And Brockton is the last budget, $440 million, almost a half a billion dollars. I'm the only, only candidate running for mayor that has an MBA degree, Master's in Business Administration from Boston College. I did it nights when I worked. Um, you know, I have a law degree. It served me well as a city councilor serving the whole city, drafting ordinances that protect and benefit our seniors and our veterans and making it a cleaner community. We need to have enforced codes. They're on the books. We need to enforce We're hit them. Every single yeah, one we of need these to, issues. Mark. We now, need to. One thing I want to say is being the city council president yes. four times, yes. it puts you in a unique role. You've been acting mayor acting when mayor. the mayor isn't in town. That's right. But you've also served on the Plymouth County Advisory, Advisory Board. Board. That's okay, right. Okay, representing Brockton for uh, a while. For a decade. And Ten years. Being the city council president, you also sit on other boards and commissions as well. I believe 21st Century right. Corp. when you're the president of the council. That's right. And um, you also have experience experience up on Beacon Hill. I've been a lawyer you, at the State House before. You were a lawyer at the State House. You were the town council in the town and of Randolph. Randolph. That's right. So it all is good, solid municipal experience that qualifies you to, to be the CEO, okay? So you're, you're basically stating to me and to the voters, you believe you have the best qualifications of all the candidates. Well, I think what you say, I do. I do believe that wholeheartedly, and I think the voters are, are agreeing when I'm calling and knocking on doors. But this is the deal. Brockton can't afford to elect someone with an experience because on day one, you have to hit the ground running. There isn't a learning curve when you're talking about a mayor of a city, of a municipality. I have the experience. You've just mentioned it, and I thank you for that. But also, you know, my, my basis being born and raised in Brockton. My mom was a nurse, retired nurse in Brockton. My dad a retired Brockton high teacher. You know, it's like Brockton is such a great community. We need to be better. We need to be inclusive. 
there's different fabrics that make up the quilt known as Brockton, and you know this, right? Different, different great immigration waves that came to Brockton. My grandparents came here, Irish immigrants to work in the factories. The Italians, the Polish, the Lithuanian, just a beautiful new wave right now. Cape Verdeans and Haitian and Asians. And there has to be a, a mesh. And, and, you know, the way that I look at it is that if you're elected mayor, right, you're the voice of all the people in Brockton, you know, and I have the experience, the leadership, the skill sets. I'm just excited about how great Brockton can be. Now, you put it on the record at the debate, and I've watched you. I was at the ordinance committee meeting that yes. you chaired. Yes. Um, this whole notion about sanctuary city. Yes. Okay. First of all, it was called the Brockton United Ordinance. That's correct. It wasn't sanctuary city. And being a lawyer yes. and looking at ordinances and having experience with that, I remember you questioning that day, even though you're chairing the meeting, you still get to ask questions, yes. talking about how it wasn't presented right and it wasn't the right fit for Brockton. Clarify the record like Please, you did the other day you. in case people don't thank see you. the full debate. Thank you, Mike. And I just got off a phone call with a, another gentleman that asked me. Um, there was a, a mailer of another opponent that, that went out recently and said he was the only one against Sanctuary City. I'm the only candidate that has voted twice against the proposal, two times. Once as chairman of the ordinance committee, we voted four to one unfavorable back to the full council, and then eight of us, it was an eight to three vote to not pass it to a third reading. We were against it. It's already been stopped. It's already been failed at the city council. It wasn't a good fit. It violated federal law. If I'm elected mayor, I would never support an ordinance that's unlawful, that would hamper our law enforcement and hurt our federal funding and state funding. It just doesn't make sense. And I, I'm on the record for that. But I also think there was a reason why my colleagues proposed it. It's because some segments of Brockton, some populations feel they don't have a voice. That's why we have to be more inclusive. We need to have a police force. We have great, beautiful, brave men and women on Brockton police. But we need to have more open community policing, walking the beats. It goes back to safer streets, cleaner streets, right? Mm -hmm. But again, you need to have open communications. One thing that I've learned over 14 years, Mark, is you have to collaborate with your colleagues to be successful, right? You also have to be a good listener. And those are skills that you have to bring to City Hall when you're in the corner office. And, and again, Leadership matters, and again, my campaign has already been endorsed, wonderfully endorsed by Brockton Firefighters, Local 144, the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, the Iron Workers, which is Local 7, IBEW 2222, and the Plumbers and Gas Fitters, Local 12. These are organizations that do their due diligence, interview all the candidates, and they've proud, proudly endorsed me. So I'm ready to go, Mark. I'm ready. I'm excited for the 17th. And dealing with municipal unions... Yes. You've had that experience on the other as a side. town council yeah, that's right. representing the town as management. That's right. And you would be management that's right. in Brockton. That's right. So union contracts come up all the time. There are so many unions in Brockton that you have to negotiate yep. it. So the legal expertise. I've already be... sat at the table. Okay. I've already done that for okay. a town of Randolph. And yeah, it's very important, vitally important. What is your number one idea that you would do that's unique to you that maybe the people that you're running against wouldn't come up with? Using your years of experience, just what would Bob Sullivan's first act maybe be? Something that you want to send and collaborate with the city council? So great that you asked me that. I've been asked many times, Bob, if you're elected mayor, um, what's the first act? Hire more police, hire more fire, more teachers? I said, no, we can all get to that, right? Personnel matters. The first thing you do is you have a community engagement meeting. You sit around a table, it could be at Brockton High, it could be at the War Memorial. You invite business owners and residents, the taxpayers. Let's share ideas, let's communicate. There was just a great forum at the War Memorial on the homeless issue recently with Moses Rodriguez, the mayor. Um, Without the sharing of ideas, without the listening, you know, your skills, your background is different from me. We can learn from each other and share. Um, as a city councilor at large, when I was the president back in 2012, I stood at the podium on election uh, inauguration and I said, what I'd like to do is I want to have quarterly meetings of all local elected officials, mm -hmm. from Southeastern Regional, which you serve, Mark, to the school committee, to the mayor, to the city council. And we did it. Um, and then ultimately it faded away. But what didn't fade away is my passion. So I then went to my three council at large colleagues and said, let's do a quarterly. And we do it every quarter around the city. It's a Q&A. We don't need to speak. We're there to listen. 
and talk to the constituents. It's the people business that we're in. To be successful, you need to have good leadership skills and good listening skills. Now, as the council president, yes. you get to listen more than you get to talk. Yes. You have to preside over the meeting. I do. And you have to keep control over Follow the meeting, Robert's which rules. sometimes yes. can be difficult, yes. depending on the issue. Yes. So um, in terms of listening, I, I, I hear what you're saying about having the meetings. How would you communicate to the community. Um, Mayor Carpenter did his own TV show. Yes. He, was, he did Shoe City Scoop. He was yes. on. He had more shows than any mayor. All the different mayors before him did shows. Yep. Mayor Harrington did 45 School Street. Jack Units did On the Record. Would you continue in that tradition? Well, I've already had a show called Before the Council exactly. as the exactly. council president. Communication and, of course, the, the, the offerings that the Community Access provides to the residents of Brockton, it's invaluable. And without question, I'm going to be out and about in the community like I have been, right? I'm gonna continue coaching. Um, I'm gonna be continue meeting all different segments of Brockton, but having a show is vital. And I, right now, say to you, without question, I will. I enjoy it, I love it, and we'll do it. Good, good. Now, you're a family man. Yes. You mentioned your three children, yes. your wonderful wife. Thank you. How will you balance that as the mayor? The mayor's job is complete. The city councilor at large, you represent the city citywide. Right. So it's like almost the mayor's job, but it isn't the CEO job. How will you juggle that and balance that and still coach and keep your family all intact? Yeah, I mean, I think what, what I'm very, very fortunate to have my mom and dad still living here in Brockton and my in-laws. Um, the Louisies, uh, former educators in Brockton, uh, they're, in Bro they're here in Brockton. Um, and my wife, Maria, is just, uh, she's the strength of our family. Um, so I rely on them a lot. Um, it's a serious job when you become the mayor of Brockton. You have to treat it as a serious job. You do not shed any hours. You work as hard as you can. You also surround yourself with very, very skilled people, right, experts, to make it a team effort. Um, I treat, even though it's a part-time job, the city council at large, on the books, I treat it as a full-time job. I have a full-time job, right? I am a lawyer. I, you know, I've been practicing for a long time. I also do some work for Comcast as well. But I think what needs to happen, Mark, is to elect someone, first of all, that is productive and proven, which I am, and, you know, there's a balancing act. I've done it well, thanks to my wife and my family. I'm going to continue to do it because it's that important. Brockton is just so special, special to you and to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, education, you mentioned it. You're a product of the Brockton Public Schools. I am. I'm a product of the Brockton Schools. Full disclaimer, Bob's dad oh, you was had my, my dad. history That's teacher. That's right. That's right. He, he always comes up to me and That's says right. something about that. Advanced Placement U.S. AP. History. That's right. Got five out of five on the exam and six college credits, That's and it. I credit him for that. My history teachers were the ones that shaped me from seventh grade all the way mm, to twelfth grade. Excellent educators. So the Brockton Public Schools have faced challenges. Yes. Okay. We we have funding challenges. We're a gateway city. One of the most important roles of the mayor of the city of Brockton is to be the chair of chair the school, of school committee. committee. Yep. There is a vice chair, Tom Minicello, yes. who's been there for a long time, who's a great stabilizing influence. We have a, an interim superintendent. We're going to be hiring a permanent superintendent. Right. So the mayor will be involved in that process. Talk about education and what your priorities would be and how you might be able to turn things around in terms of funding for the city. I mean, there's been talk of a lawsuit for I can't tell you how mm -hmm. long. Brockton was the one that... The Webby case was the original case, absolutely. Ed Reform, back That's in right. the day. That's right. So what are your thoughts on education? So I, I grew up in Wood 2 on Wellington Street, near the Dairy Queen off of Ash. I walked to school, Whitman Elementary School on Manamid Street, which is now closed. I know you went to Whitman yeah. as well. Walked to West Junior High. We called it Junior High at the time. And then went to Brockton High. Um, so I'm a product, as is my two sisters. And one of my sisters is now a teacher to Brookfield Elementary School. And my youngest brother also. We all went to Brockton Public Schools. Um, my wife went to Brockton Public Schools. And, and again, education has always been entrenched in my family. You just keep learning, keep learning. So I went to Boston College and got a political science degree. I then went to law school to get my law degree, New England School of Law in Boston. And then I was working and I went nights back to BC to get my MBA. Um, it's just too important right now. Brockton, the number one asset, okay, other than the beautiful residence that we have, is our education, right? It's always, always top notch. It's, it's recognized not just within the Commonwealth, but, but nationwide. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, the funding formula has always been skewed, right? So we had the Webby case. We had the McDuffie case. We had the Hancock case. Brockton plaintiffs and the SJC, Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts, ruled, yeah, the funding formula for the poorer communities isn't fair. Well, the city council, and I'm a member of the city council, we appropriated money on the last budget. Kathy Smith was the, um, was the superintendent of the schools. So we've put money aside, 150000 
to continue a lawsuit again, Mark. And it's with the gateway communities. It's with the Fitchburgs and the Haverhills and the New Bedfords. And, and you know what? We have to get it right. A mayor needs to work with the school committee, the superintendent. It's turning a page right now with Mike Thomas. He's great. I've known him since high school. You know, he's all in. Um, but we also have to work with our state delegation. We have three state reps and a state senator. We need to make sure that Chapter 90, Chapter 70 funds, lottery reimbursement is coming back appropriately to Brockton. It hasn't for years. We need to address that. It's, it's really an injustice for Brockton. It seems like the legislators are all on it. Our side. Yes, A absolutely. lot of them were products of the Brockton absolutely. Public Schools, too. Representative Claire Croner, yes. she was at the Whitman yeah, School, Yeah, she was too. at Whitman as well. Okay. Um, but leadership seems to kind of control the agenda. You have a Republican governor mm -hmm. who, in my opinion, hasn't done a lot of favors for Brockton. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm a proud mm -hmm. Democrat. I'm going to say that. Mm -hmm. um, and the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, it, we keep getting told next year, next year, next year, and a lot of us are getting tired that really care about the educational system. I think Brockton is second to none. There is no way that I would have ever been in my field of media if there wasn't a high school television studio 40 years ago. Right, Mr. Long Tom Buba ago. was up Tom there. Tom Buba was yeah, there absolutely. and even before him. And that's where I decided what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. My first appearance on TV was traumatic because I ran for uh, class treasurer and, and I was afraid to speak until I had Maria and Ania than Maria oh, yeah. before to be yeah. my public speaking teacher. But what I'm concerned about is you got to go, mayor has to go up to Beacon Hill. Yep. You have no problem testifying on Beacon Hill. I've done you work it. for what election law? Election I was law chief. Uh, I was chief legal counsel of the Joint Committee on Election Laws. Right. That's right. And I've already testified on behalf of Brockton residents and businesses at the state house and state hearings, um, and I would continue to do that. There has to be a leader, a CEO, a mayor that creates a bond at the state house, and also down in D.C. You know, with Congressman Lynch and Senator Markey and Senator. That's that's the, that's the team effort, the collaborative approach, and it's a trickle down. You know, Tip O'Neill. What did he say? All politics. All politics is local. And that's 100% accurate. To elect people that are qualified experience, and it matters, but also creating the synergy with the other elected officials, state and federal, to benefit Brockton. That's how, that's how you govern. That's how you serve. Do you think it's important to do what Mayor Carpenter did and go to Washington, D.C.? I do. And, ha and, 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 and actually put the Congressman Lynch, Senator Warren, Senator Markey, and now we're getting into election politics right. because some of them are running for higher office, yes. some of them are going to have challenges. Brockton needs to get its fair share. We've been fighting. This is a fighting city. Okay? That's right. People city for, of champions, it sure is. For, in every way, not yes. just sports. No, every okay? way. But um, it seems to me that we've gotten a little more in the last few years because we've actually advocated effectively on our, our behalf. And it's, it's it, education is priceless. It I don't is. think you can put a price on it. From kindergarten, I had one kid that went to half-day kindergarten and one kid that went to full-day mm -hmm. kindergarten. There was a huge difference, yes. okay? Yes. The gifted and talented yes. program that Brockton has. Yes. So we need the resources, we need the money, and then they change the formula on how you count poor kids. That's right. And really hurt Brockton. That's right. And then the charter. And that transportation reimbursement. Okay. We're the getting cheated on that. We are. The charter school. Yes. Okay, how do you see that whole thing? There, there, I mean, there's charter schools, there's Catholic schools, right. you mentioned Trinity yes. Academy, yeah. there's private schools. Yes. But that charter school is taking a lot of money away from Brockton Public Schools. It is. What, what do you think you could do, or do you have any thoughts on anything to do with the charter school? Well, I testified against it, just, just on the, 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 the mere fact that it would take funds, significant funds, away from Brockton Public School. And, uh, you know, I, I have uh, some constituents that have a great experience with, with the New Heights champion, uh, New Heights school, the charter school. But I'll say this, it all gets down to doing the right thing. We collectively as elected officials need to do the right thing. The right thing is to go and bang the drum at Beacon Hill until they listen to us to get the funding that's going to help the kids, right? And also, it's not just the education, right? We've got to get the funding to help our infrastructure. Our roads are terrible in right. Brockton, right? So it's the little things, right? Perception is reality. Right. That's what I was talking about code enforcement, Mark, right? Yep. You need to have a cleaner city, right? When you come into Brockton now, it doesn't look great. You need to beautify it. It's More such, than once a yeah. year with a beautification That's day. right. Okay? That's right. Keep you, Brockton beautiful. Kind of like Neighborhood Crime Watch yes. where you get people to be proud of their neighborhood. That's like, right. Like, like, like Lynn Smith is doing neighborhood yes, associations. She is. She is. If, you can, if you can do that, but the roads and bridges and everything, Brockton did a few things smart. 
we have a viaduct so we don't have grade crossings That's right. for trains. That's right. Okay? But the bridges that are under them are hundreds of years old. Absolutely. The, you're right about the city looking clean and the perception. Well, do you remember this, Mark? Several years back, I filed a resolve and I had Dave Farrell, great, great veteran of the, of the armed services, and he is the um, agent for the veterans in Brockton. And I had Mr. Farrell come in and I said, David, I'd like to put all of the monuments in Brockton, all the parks that are dedicated to people that gave the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, right. the vets. And, and full disclosure, my wife's great uncle, Joe Tomaselli, was blown up over World War II. I and was there for that. Tomaselli Square that. over there. Yeah. The grass was this high, and we needed to put it on regular maintenance. And you know what? It's happened now. So all the monuments around the city of Brockton are being addressed, and that's the right thing to do, and it, it makes a difference. And another thing that makes a difference is the street lights. Right? right? So I had brought to the attention of the city council, listen, in Randolph, they acquired the streetlights. Why can't we do that in Brockton? And people said, well, what do you mean? I said, we're paying rent every month, significant money every month to National Grid. Let's buy the lights. We don't have to pay that rent. Cost us 42000 to buy every light from National Grid. 42000 We have saved hundreds and hundreds of thousands per year for doing that. Then when Mayor Carpenter came in, I said, Bill, that was phase one under Mayor Balzotti. Phase two now, change every light bulb to an LED. It's going to look brighter. We're going to have a 10-year warranty. We can amortize it over 20 years, get a municipal bond. It will pay for itself. It makes sense. He agreed. The city council agreed, and we did it. And now at night, Brockton looks brighter. It looks better. These are the little things that make a difference. I brought them up. My colleagues bought into it, and then the residents benefit. We're going to bring it to downtown because we have nice-looking lights, but they're not the LEDs right? quite of right? the same. We, we, downtown. You mentioned parks. I yes. want to mention parks. Up in Lowell, National Park Service and the federal government, because the, the mills and everything, yep. their national register of, you know, all of that. We have D.W. Field Park. It's a jewel. Yes. 700 acres. Yes. D.W. Field gave us a trust fund yes. to, to maintain it. That's right. The golf course is well maintained. The That's golf right. course has now turned into a, a, a wonderful experience. Would you support something like a park ranger or getting National Park Service, maybe to work with the city of Brockton, to do something with D.W. Field Park. I've heard ideas like do La Salette in the winter and have a light show like they do down in uh, North Attleboro. Yep. What do you think about something Absolutely, like that? and you know this, Mark. I, I'm on the Historic Society for Brockton here, and being the son of a history teacher, I, I, I love history. Um, and, and, you know, D.W. Field was, was a kind, generous man, right? And Brockton benefits. Generations have benefited. We can do better in there without question. When we were kids, they used to have the park police go in there, right? right? And the budget constraints killed that. Um, mayor Harrington, when Jim was the mayor, he put me on as a city councilor to be on the study task force for DW Fields Park Golf Course. It's, it's a gem now, right? It's great. It's, it's, it's making money. It's great. Now we have to look at the park, right? When we were kids, we'd fish up there, we'd skate there, you know, and when my parents were kids, they'd, they'd swim in Ellis Pond. So I think what we need to do is we need to have a listening session right? And get all the ideas. That's a great idea. La Salette, do it in Brockton. It, that's a win-win, right? Do it for Hanukkah. Do it for the holidays. That makes sense. But without suggestions like that, we're not going to take the next step. So I wouldn't rule out anything. It's just a beautiful place and we need to really maximize the potential. That was a John Drystadt suggestion. When I was in Rotary with him, he wanted to do that. We were going to have Rotary do it, but we never quite got there. And then if you look at like the triathlon that's coming yep. up over there, there are other recreational uses and things. Plus, uh, Dave Gorman does the road races, which right. is great. How yeah. many parks do we have in right. the city? And that's a quality of life issue, too. That's right. Now, you mentioned seniors. Let's talk about seniors. Seniors is one of the least funded portions of the budget. That's right. I know you brought some tax relief to some seniors to get them to do some of the city jobs and yep. school jobs. The Senior Center is a wonderful center, the Mary Cruz Kennedy Senior yep. Center. It's not big enough. They need more budget monies, and they need a bigger building. That's right. What, what would you do as mayor with that? So I've always said this, without the senior citizens and without the veterans, we wouldn't have anything. We owe everything to them, right? We really do. Yes. They're the greatest generation. We need to continue that. So you mentioned it. I drafted legislation, a law, an ordinance here that veterans and seniors can volunteer time. If they own a house, they can get a price reduction on the real estate tax. People said, oh, we're losing money. No, it's the right thing to do. It's a good thing. It's a win-win. We also have to look at providing services to seniors, right? We have the elder abuse walk. We need to make sure that our seniors are being protected and cared for in Brockton. 
There's a, there's a projection right now to add to the Council on Aging. We need to do that. It's long overdue. They're doing a, a capital funding campaign right now. And I think, again, it's, it's, it's a listening session. It's a brainstorming and saying, what are the services that are provided right now? How do we enhance those? What are not provided? How do we provide them? And at the end of the day, it's working together to benefit the seniors, benefit you know, uh, the schools, you know, benefit Brockton as a whole. It's, it's all intertwined. And again, the person that will be the leader will be the mayor. And again, I'm asking voters, registered voters, it's a preliminary, not a primary, Democrats, Republican, unenrolled independents, please go to the poll. The seven people running for this preliminary gets whittled down to two. And I hope that I make the final two. Okay, I just got told I have five minutes okay. left. I want to leave a little bit Great. for you at the end to do a closing statement and you know do talk directly Thank you. to the voters. Um, you're also talking public safety, quality of life. How do you prioritize in your head as a mayor, as a city councilor, um, which gets more of a priority? If you think about public safety, um, I've had councilors and people tell me, hey, you know what, library's great, but uh, we're gonna fund the police more than mm -hmm. the library. Understood, but a library is public safety. A library is higher education. Yes. If you think of it all together, how do you come up with your priority list when you hit your first 100 days? I think it's a collective approach, right? So we have crime, we have a direct correlation to drug abuse, drug addiction, and crime, and quality of life where there's ordinance on the books, laws, local laws that are being blatantly violated, right? They're all intertwined. So when I say a safer community, a cleaner community, that's almost as one. Um, what I would do, and I do this every budget, and I've done 14 budgets, what I would say is, over time, and you know this, Mark, is, is a creature and a mechanism under collective bargaining. I get it. But for police over time, we can shave some of that off, get some funding to hire new police, men and women, the brave men and women, get them on the streets, community policing, walking beats, right? Hiring new police, but also filling the retired spots. But we have to hire more police, make it safer, and then have an open, transparent relationship. You know, same thing with fire, you know, and same thing with teachers. So I think, you know, it's a collective approach, and you say the first 100 days. Mine is this. On day one, what you see is what you get with me for 14 years, and I'm not, I'm not letting people down. I haven't. Um, and I think with, again, experience matters, but also it's like, Brockton, I didn't leave, I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. And win or lose, my wife and I are raising our kids here, but Brockton can go to the next step. And it's, again, working in collaboration. You know, the D I'm still thinking about the DW. That, I never heard of that. That's a great idea, Mark. But again, people that pay taxes expect a better community, and we need to get there. And we can only get there by electing the right people at City Hall. Okay, I'm done with the questions. You and I could talk an hour. Oh, we definitely could. two minutes left. I'm gonna give you a minute and a half. Closing statement, talk directly to the voters. Thank you, again, I'm here. Thanks again, though. You're, You're welcome. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. you. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this. And I want to thank Mark. Uh, he's done yeoman's, for many, many years, yeoman's work uh, to benefit the public. Um, my name is Robert Sullivan, and I'm, I'm, I'm a Brocktonian. And Brockton is my home. It's your home, and it's our home. And on September 17th, I'm humbly asking you to vote for me to be the next mayor of the city of Brockton. For 14 years, I've served the whole city, all seven wards, all 28 precincts. I've done, you know, it's not how long you serve. It's what have you done when you've been there. And I believe my accomplishments speak volumes. It's working with my fellow elected officials to better Brockton on a daily basis. I have a website, electrobertsullivan.com. I'd like you to look at it. I'd like you to vet it out. Give me some suggestions. Give me some ideas. Give me some criticisms. That's what it means to serve. But this election on September 17th is a preliminary. And I am asking you and to please, please go to the polls. They open at 7 a.m. They close at 8 p.m. But it's really, really important because the seven people running um, are, are going to get whittled down to two. And I'd like to be in that top mix for November 5th. But we we can't even worry about that until we get past September 17th, if we do. So I'm humbly asking you, please support me. I'm going to continue working with you, working for you. I'm number four on the ballot, but I'm always first for Brockton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, and uh, we'll see you on election night. Thanks, Mark. The biggest, most important thing is to make sure you get out and vote at that preliminary election. Brockton, let's not disappoint. Let's have a huge turnout on that day so we can show everybody what a City of Champions is all about. Thanks for watching.